Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Able Flight announces 2018 scholarship recipients. New Caledonia Alpha Trainer accumulates more than 4,000 hours of flight. And symposium message, FAA is open for business. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's March 12th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. One of aviation's greatest programs, Able Flight, is announcing its 2018 class, which includes a woman paralyzed due to an accident, two future pilots who are deaf, a former Navy crewman who became disabled due to disease, and a man who became paralyzed due to an auto accident, a man who was born with a condition affecting all four limbs, and a soldier wounded in combat. In May, five of the aspiring new pilots will report for training at Purdue University, and two will train at The Ohio State University. Receiving full-flight training scholarships are Emily Hoop of California, Chad Hardy of Indiana, Rob Shardy of Ohio, Julia Velasquez of California, Corey Putterbo of Arizona, Asher Kirschbaum of Maryland, and Staff Sergeant Robert Bartlett of Virginia. As with all Able Flight pilots who have come before them, this year's class will soon discover how challenging our training course is at both universities, said Able Flight's Charles Stites. This is the ninth consecutive year of Able Flight's partnership with Purdue and its second year working with Ohio State University. Graduates of the class of 2018 will be guests of honor when they receive their Able Flight wings on stage at EAA AirVenture. After the break, Boeing expands pilot development program with OK Airways. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Boeing has expanded its commercial pilot development program with the addition of OK Airways to its growing customer list. Through the pilot development program, Boeing works with a network of flight schools around the globe to provide airlines with comprehensive commercial training, including screening PDP cadets, managing student performance and correction, and developing commercial pilot training courses and materials. The comprehensive program includes ab initio pilot training from zero flight hour experience through advanced flight training and is designed to develop cadets into 737 type rated first officers. The DOT's Office of Inspector General will audit the FAA's aircraft registry following a request from the Chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and its Subcommittee on Aviation, as well as the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation. The AOIG said that previous work conducted in 2013 and 2014 found that the FAA's registry lacked accurate and complete information on pilots and U.S. registered aircraft, including aircraft owned and operated under trust. 17 aviation industry organizations are praising legislation introduced last week by a bipartisan group of U.S. Senators to help stabilize the country's technical aviation workforce. The Aviation Maintenance Workforce Development Pilot Program was introduced in the U.S. Senate by Senators James Inhofe, Richard Blumenthal, Jerry Morin, and Maria Cantwell. 
SpaceX could be launching spacecraft from its Boca Chica, Texas launch facility as early as this year. But those launches may be suborbital testing of rockets rather than things like commercial satellite launches, at least early on. Orbital launches from Boca Chica would likely not begin until sometime in 2019 or later, according to the report. The facility could be used for testing of a planned Mars rocket. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. While there are those who say that LSA aircraft are built too lightly and cannot handle the strain of the training environment, Pit Patrol reports that one of their Alpha Trainer aircraft now has 4,000 hours as a training aircraft. Located in New Caledonia, the aircraft is only 500 feet from the ocean. It's a humid tropical climate, and this is where composite aircraft excel in durability compared with their metal cousins. Flight School Hibiscus and New Caledonia got their first Alpha Trainer in July 2014. Immediately, they started to offer flight training and sightseeing flights. The weather and the landscape in New Caledonia are so incredible that it's possible to fly all year round. The Alpha reached 2100 flight hours in just two years. During a recent engine overhaul, the aircraft turned up to be in excellent condition despite warm and moist air, salty atmosphere, and flight lessons with many rough landings. Hibiscus currently operates two Virus SW planes and an Alpha trainer. In 2017, they upgraded their aircraft with an instrument panel upgrade and continue to fly approximately 1,000 flight hours per year in the flight school. After these messages, symposium message, FAA is open for business. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. During the third annual FAA UAS Symposium, co-sponsored by AUVSI, FAA officials said repeatedly that they want to talk to industry about ways to help companies achieve their goals, including for beyond line-of-sight flights and package delivery. The message of the whole conference is the FAA is open for business, said Derek Kahn, Undersecretary for Policy at the U.S. Department of Transportation, summing up the FAA's stance at the symposium. One key element to achieve such thing is an unmanned traffic management system which NASA is working on, along with numerous industry and government partners. Our research will be completed by 2019, said Paramal Cooperdecker, who is leading the UTM effort for NASA. NASA's work is divided into modular sections, so some functions can be rolled out before the whole effort is finished and turned over to the industry to implement. Jay Merkel, a deputy vice president at FAA's ATO, urged attendees, don't wait for UTM. We are all here ready to start moving you toward whatever you need under this paradigm. You just need to help us understand what you need and where you need it, and we will help you get there. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.